Jeff, so much of this story and so much of the book that you wrote is about how uncomfortable you are with the idea that you get all this attention from what happened. So when a filmmaker comes to you and says, you know, you've written the story, you've had the media coverage, but we're gonna do one more thing. We're gonna make a movie about your life. What is the level of willingness or unwillingness to go one more step in terms of telling the story? Well, at that point in my life, I was, I think when I talked to you, I was heading to the casino with Sully and Big D and, uh, we were feeling good, and um, it was a drunk yes. Yeah, so I, uh, you know, I thought it was a joke. I was, you know, I was like, all right, cool, a movie. You know, I love movies. Um, that's what I was thinking. And then as I was starting the process, and I got to meet Todd and, and John, I realized, you know, it, was, it might be something special. So I accepted that, and um, then I, then it just got bigger and bigger. And Dave, David Gordon Green signed on, and I met Dave, and I was like, oh, he's. He's the real deal. He's a, you know, he's kind of weird, but he's he's a nice guy. <laughs> and um, just from what he was talking about, you know, I knew that he wanted to do a, like a real film about this, and and it was going to be honest and and real, and that's how Dave is. And then Jake signed on, and and it was just like, wow, this is really going to happen. So, I mean, it was tough, mm -hmm. but um, you know, it was also. You know, cool because I didn't know it was going to come, and and I love movies, so you know, I was kind of excited to see what this was going to be like. John, there's a there are probably two different versions of of this story that you can see. There's the film, and then there's the book, and they're very different things. When you are thinking about what it is that you want to tell, the story that you want to tell, and the true story that you want to tell, what are the conversations you have with Jeff and his family about getting to that story? And how do you go about kind of almost re-reporting the story that's already been told? Well, you know, I, I like a lot of people. I read the book; it was really, it was really moving. But it was pretty evident that like there's a much deeper story in there. I mean, he wrote it pretty quick, and he wrote it when he was sort of hadn't even really processed a lot. So talking to Jeff and, and going out there, and I grew up, you know, about 35 minutes from the neighborhood. So I kind of got it, and I got like sort of the idea that people where we grew up hide a lot, you know, uh, keep a lot contained, it takes a while to crack away at that. And so we just went out there and it was, it was not easy, <laughs> you know, uh, getting the truth, getting to the really, really uncomfortable places and in, in the, in the pain. And I got to know Jeff for a long time and a lot of his family and the story was still happening while I got to know him. And, you know, I, I just think I gained everyone's trust and, and they realized that it was coming out of love. And I sort of fell in love with everybody and said, to tell this story the right way, we have to really, really go to dark places and, and not flinch away from that. And th it, after a lot of time, they started to open up and really give me a lot. And Jeff, you know, I'd circle back and ask him and he's like, oh, you know, they told you that? Yeah, that did happen, that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, I mean, it was a real, it was a long process. It was, it was uh, I'm just glad they gave me that kind of trust, but it, it definitely wasn't easy. Jake, you come on as an actor and a producer. Do they happen at the same time? Does one beget the other? What was your, how did, how did you come on to the project as a producer, I guess? And is that after you've signed on to play Jeff? I had initially signed on as as an actor. Uh, that that was it. And then uh, um, one thing led to another and a sort of strange, circuitous journey that is getting a movie made. And uh financing was sort of slipping and all those ideas were happening. And I just started a, uh, my own company that had a financing deal with bold films, um, who, uh, our great company who financed nightcrawler a film that I was in. And, uh, as things were slipping, I gave them the script and I said, Hey, would you guys be into this? And, um, they said, yeah. And, uh, that's how I became a producer on the project. And then we were, you know, making the movie, all together and then I was I was uh and then yeah Todd why is David Gordon Green a good choice as a director for a story like this because what John's just talking about you've opened almost a Pandora's box because you're having this conversation as a screenwriter about what heroism is and you have to make a movie that embraces that but doesn't take advantage of it so you're not cashing in on the very idea that you're trying to examine 
Yeah, I mean, David might have been an unconventional choice, but one that we were really excited about because, you know, certainly going back to his earlier work, like All the Real Girls and George Washington, he has a real, a real facility for reality and kind of getting into humanity and character. And certainly this movie has that in spades. But then the other side of it and the thing that, you know, John did so br brilliantly with the script and Jeff has naturally as just a person is a sense of humor. And how do you kind of put the release valve into those extremely dramatic moments that we knew we were going to be having in the movie. And David also has a, a really steady hand at comedy. So the, the idea of someone who can kind of thread the tone between those two uh, felt really important for this movie. And he came in and sat and kind of really just got the script and embraced that whole idea. And because he's a guy who's done so many different kinds of things in his career, um, tackling something brand new for him was a new idea. So it was kind of a risk on all of our parts, but I think, you know, both personality wise and, uh, and tonally, he was the right guy. Jake, I'm gonna ask you something about playing somebody like Jeff and the way in which he is seen and the way in which that reflects on what you do in your line of work. And I came across a quote from Tom Hanks where he's talking about Sully. And I think it's a really good line. Here's what Tom Hanks says. There is this projection that is put upon you as an actor that because you played these guys, you actually have some of their attributes. Believe me, my skill set is to make it appear as though I have these attributes without having any of the actual attributes. That being said, as an audience guy, as a guy who saw movies as I was growing up, the power of the cinema and the power of the heroic vision, the guy you can rely on in motion pictures makes you feel as though when you leave the theater that you spent that time very well and that you have some degree of greater confidence, that you belong to something bigger than yourself, and that there are people that you can have faith in. Amen. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, yes, I think that there is a, an enormous part of performance and acting that is wish fulfillment. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that when you have the opportunity even to, to pick the roles that you choose, I think you end up sort of trying sometimes that unconsciously moving towards people you, you would like to be like. Mm -hmm. um, in my case, that's not necessarily true most of the time. Um, but I, but, but no, I, I think you, you know, the idea of physical strength is something that I always wanted to explore. There's a lot of things you, you wish to explore and wish to think about yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's Jeff, um, and the realization that no matter what I did or no matter how hard I tried, I don't think that I would have probably been able to survive. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that I would have probably been able to have the strength that this man has. And um, having to play that well somewhere, knowing that is I think actually Jeff's journey. Yeah, and so that was what I discovered along the way, was the idea that it is always the doubt, it is the thing in your mind saying, I can't do it, that makes you ultimately, if you're still here, do it. And I see him at like now, you know, we're even closer now than when we were filming. This past year has been an extraordinary year for him, a year full of bigger growth than I've seen any of my friends have. He is 15 months sober, he is a father devoted to, okay. yes. He only drank Pellegrino at the wedding last night. Um, I know that for a fact, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, they didn't have any Pellies. Oh, okay. No <laughs> seltzers. Yeah, just seltzer and no Pelly. Um, but I think the last 15 months to become a father, to really commit himself to being a father, to commit himself to that life. Um, and, you know, I think that that growth is extraordinary. And so to me... All I can say is in those moments of doubt, those moments where, which I have constantly, where I don't believe in myself, I always think of Jeff. Mm -hmm. And playing him was an honor because by proxy, I got to feel the extraordinary love that has passed his way, that helped him survive. And it has been truly the greatest honor of my career and definitely one of my life. And that's that. <laughs>